Alexander Kara is with us tonight, an expert at Strategy Defence Centre. Hello, Alexander. Hello, how are you? Well, lovely. I'm alive. That's something these days already. Um, that was a second question, but I will slide it to, to the first one. Well, were you surprised by Trump's win? Well, it was not out of the blue. Uh, mm. We followed the uh, opinion polls uh, from the battleground states, uh, and certainly it was obvious that uh, two candidates are shoulder to shoulder. They, they were just uh, uh, with the um, just a, a number of margin uh, between them. So it was uh, obvious that uh, someone is going to win, and there is a, uh, there is a highly likely chance uh, for Mr. Trump to to uh, to get that. Uh, the other thing that uh, we were surprised uh, the uh, how the Republicans have made uh, in the Congress. So they took uh, over the Senate, and uh, they have a pretty good majority in the House. Surprise is not the uh, uh, the the proper term for me, but some people in Ukraine and abroad they tell me that it is good for Ukraine because actually. Trump is the only one who acts because what Democrats do, they just cede grounds to any opposing force, with this time Trump. And Trump was the one who uh, propagates it and who delivered the decision to deliver the lethal weapons for Ukraine and money from Johnson also followed after Trump's pressure. So do you personally think, I know this is too easy and too simple breaking in like that, but maybe you can emotionally say, is Trump good or bad, do you think, for Ukraine? I know we have to wait and see. Well, first, I know. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, the Ukrainians survived the uh, Russian Empire, the Soviet Union, all those atrocities and the war with Russia since 2014. So we have no other choice but to be optimistic about our fate, our uh, sovereignty and about uh, beloved uh, state. Uh, and yes, uh, there are some uh, uh, sympathizers of Mr. Trump and his uh, ideas, and they believe that uh, he is capable of uh, bringing peace to Ukraine. And for sure, he is the one who is not going to be shy to kick uh, the Russian uh, the Russians uh, in some instances. For example, uh, he will unleash the energy sector of the United States and flood in the uh, the American and foreign markets with uh, the American oil, and then uh, Raprashma with uh, MBS in Saudi Arabia would do the same. And it means that less uh, money uh, would have uh, put in for his war efforts in, in Ukraine. Uh, and there are some other good ideas that uh, Trump is going to uh, implement uh, right away after he's in office. Uh, but from the other hand, uh, what we heard from him personally and from G.D. Wentz, uh, the vice president-elect, uh, and some other people around Trump uh, are not encouraging us. And I believe that uh, it's uh, the, let's say, challenge for Ukraine uh, to reshape this thinking and right. to rely on European partners uh, to convey that uh, it's not going to work, it's not going to fly uh, with regard to Ukraine. Because this war is not about territory. It's about the very existence of Ukraine, Absolutely. and it's about the security architecture in Europe. So I believe that we can, uh, we, we face uh, uh, challenges, uh, we, we, I mean, with Mr. Trump and mm. his ideas. At the same time, uh, there are some uh, windows of opportunity we can explore. Uh, and yes, you're right that uh, the Biden administration uh, did a tremendous jo job supporting Ukraine, but they fall short uh, defining Ukrainian uh, victory. They fall short uh, supporting this uh, definition of victory, uh, and certainly they were paralyzed by the fear of uh, escalation from Russia, while Russia was escalating each and every time. Exactly. So uh, the decisive uh, mood and, and the, the character of Mr. Trump may play a positive role uh, for Ukraine if we manage, mm. I, I, when I say we, I mean not just Ukraine, but our right, partners right. and our friends and, and allies within the uh, U.S. Uh, Congress uh, and uh, the uh, expert society and uh, uh, ordinary Americans. So we can pursue Mr. Trump and his uh, bakers that uh, it's in the interest of the United States uh, to continue support in Ukraine. Amen to that. And the last question for tonight. China, Xi Jinping called first to congratulate Mr. Trump. Do you believe this is a sign of sorts? 
Uh, well, uh, he uh, understand that uh, it's going to be a difficult relations uh, with uh, the incoming administration uh, as it was before, because uh, Mr. Trump unleashed a huge tariff uh, barriers and in, in sanctions and a lot of other things. And he see China uh, taking advantage of over the American companies, businesses. And certainly uh, Trump, uh, uh, even though he said that uh, uh, that, that Taiwan is, is not that important. He didn't say that uh, the United States are going to fight for Taiwan in, in case uh, China decides to invade. Uh, but uh, for sure, people around Trump would form uh, his uh, foreign in the security policy to deter China from uh, move, moving such a, uh, doing such a step. So Xi Jinping was uh, doing the right thing just to congratulate this, the head of the one of the largest and one of the most powerful states uh, in terms of the military and economy and technology and finance. Uh, and certainly he he thinks that there is a possibility uh, to uh, have a great bargain with uh, Trump because he failed to do this with Joe Biden. He once said that uh, the world is enough for two nations to share and to strive. Uh, and Joseph Biden rejected this uh, proposal because uh, the Democrats are not uh, in mood to restore spheres of influence. They're talking about, they've been talking about uh, the uh, principle uh, or, or international system based on norms and principles. Uh, the Mr. Trump is a bit of different kind uh, and he may uh, think in these uh, categories, but I'm not sure that Americans would uh, agree on such a thing like right. dividing the world right. into two poles. Well, you know, some things are really encouraging about his cabinet, just as well. Susie Wiles, for example, and Mike Pompeo has, as may be uh, becoming a, a Secretary of, of, of Defense, which is absolutely astonishing for Ukraine, some people say. And these people are very influential people in the United States. I've been talking to them. So you're absolutely right that we just have to wait and see what happens because things that um, are Trump talking and Trump acting are two different personalities, if you ask me. Do you agree? Well, yes, for sure. Uh, and we've, been, we've seen it before on many occasions with Trump and with uh, uh, the candidates for the highest office in the United States. They, they may propose some ideas, but then they face realities. Because if you're talking about, uh, in both cases, in China, in Russia, uh, they will face uh, different actors, not just Russia and Ukraine, but European partners in our case, uh, and the allies of the United States in the region, I mean, South Korea, Japan, Australia, uh, India, and the United Kingdom. So they will uh, shape their strategy, taking into account all those factors, it's for sure. But uh, we should uh, wait and see uh, how the new cabinet will be staffed uh, with which people. Uh, and certainly we've seen that uh, when, when for the first cadency of Mr. Trump was a bit chaotic and he replaced a lot of uh, figures on the go. So it's going to happen once again with this administration. But anyway, we will see the names uh, of the uh, key on key positions. And then uh, we can uh, understand the way of thinking of those people, what they are going to advise to Mr. Trump, mm. what they are going to draw, how, uh, what kind of decisions they are going to draw for, for, for him to take. Uh, and we will see how the Chinese and the Russians would react on, on, right. on those strategies. So it's it's not it's far from being settled uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Trump would be able uh, to, set, to to stop this war in 24 hours in Ukraine or uh, just to restrain China and to establish a new modus operandi with, with this uh, economic giant. Well, I hope that we see, and I hope we have more commands of. You as an expert of what is going on, because certainly turmoil in Europe and turmoil in politics, but it doesn't matter. You know, it will end up bad for Ukraine. Let's wait and see. And thank you so very much so far. Thank you for having me. Thank you. We talk soon. Goodbye.